Despite the technological advances of the last few centuries, the universe is far from having revealed all its secrets. And for good reason. Only 5% of what makes up the universe is known to this day. This 5% represents the so-called ordinary matter, the one that we can see or detect, and therefore study. Dark matter, or dark energy, represents the remaining 95%. However, if dark matter dominates, its nature and its impact on galaxies remains a mystery. Beyond doing everything possible to understand the universe that surrounds it for thousands of years, man has not ceased to question. How big is the universe? Does it have a limit? Do we live on the only planet that can support life? And if life exists in the farthest reaches of the cosmos, what does it look like? To answer this question, researchers are taking a close look at the stars closest to our solar system. Proxima Centauri is particularly coveted, especially since in 2016, a rocky planet was discovered in the habitable zone of this star, which has some peculiarities. Dear Traveler, Good morning. Today we are going to discover our neighboring solar system, Proxima Centauri. Before leaving to explore this mysterious part of the universe, think of liking the video and subscribing to it so you don't miss anything. Thank you and have a nice trip. Since ancient times, astronomers have been scanning our starry sky in search of new stars. A titanic task is then undertaken to identify and map them. This task is all the more complicated because nothing is fixed, contrary to what one might think. Galaxies, each of which can contain hundreds of billions of stars, are constantly rotating. But not only. Thanks to the work of several researchers in the years 1920 to 1930, we know that the universe is constantly expanding. One of these astronomers, a man named Hubble, found that the velocities of distance or recession of distant galaxies were positive, proving that they are always moving away from each other. Hubble's law thanks to the relationship between the speed and distance of galaxies or other distant objects, demonstrates that our universe is in perpetual expansion. Hubble has also established that the more distant the galaxy studied, the greater the speed of expansion. But another problem greatly complicates this vast project. It is the luminosity of cosmic objects, if some are relatively well visible, even with a naked eye, others emit little or no luminosity. It is an incomparable technical and scientific feat to be able to detect faint stars located millions of light years away. How then can we claim to want to map the universe? Moreover, what size can it be? According to the current cosmological model, its boundaries would be located 45 billion light years from our Earth, or 450,000 billion billion kilometers. But who can say what is beyond this visible part? To date, no one. Although no one is yet able to know how far the universe extends, a team of researchers has taken up a challenge. A new map has just been created, Cosmic Flows 4. It lists no less than 56,000 galaxies spread out in our growing universe. These scientists who used eight different methods of calculation have succeeded in the incredible. 
they were able to measure the distance between the galaxies, their distance as well as their speed of distance. Although the origin of our universe remains the greatest of mysteries, the calculation of its expansion has become feasible. This new map, after the study of these tens of thousands of galaxies, allows to determine its expansion rate with a precision never equaled until now. Thanks to Cosmic Flows 4, it is estimated that the universe is about 13.8 billion years old. The hypothetical date of the appearance of the famous Big Bang is thus becoming more precise. But are we in this immensity towards the center of the universe? At present, our observations are limited by the distance covered by the light produced during the Big Bang. It is impossible to go beyond this distance, and therefore, to prove or not that the universe has a limit, that it is totally flat, or on the contrary, curved. How then to determine the center of something that is unlimited? What is certain is that our Milky Way is part of a cluster of more than 50 galaxies, the local group. This cluster extends over 7 million light years and is located on the periphery of an even larger cluster, the local supercluster, which is between 100 and 200 million light years in diameter and contains several hundred clusters of galaxies. Until recently, it was thought that this local supercluster was the last identifiable structure in the cosmos. That was without counting on a 2014 discovery. Their discovery called into question the size of the local supercluster to which we belong. It turns out that it is actually just a lobe belonging to a supercluster that alone gathers 100,000 large galaxies Named Linea Kea, immense celestial horizon in Hawaiian, the local supercluster actually extends over 500 million light years. Our place is then far from the center of Linea Kea. We can even say that the Milky Way is located in a suburb far from the cosmic center. In front of this immensity, it is even more legitimate for us to return to our initial question. Would the Earth be the only planet in the whole universe where life could develop? And if, in a not-so-distant country, a planet proved to be habitable? This is the hope of a number of scientists who have studied our neighboring solar system, Proxima Centauri. If this system turns out to be very close to us on the scale of Laniakea, it is still 4.244 light years away. To give you an idea, imagine the Voyager 1 probe, which is currently traveling at 61,000 kilometers per hour, or 30,000 miles per hour. If it were to reach it, it would manage to cover these 270,000 astronomical units or 270,000 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun, after a long journey of 70,000 years. I therefore propose that you explore Proxima Centauri and invite you to take advantage of the trip to admire the cosmic beauty that surrounds you. I want to reassure you that this trip will be short, because we will travel at the speed of light. Perhaps we will even have the opportunity to take a shortcut? But let's keep the suspense alive and start our interstellar journey towards a still unexplored area of the cosmos. Let's leave our beautiful blue planet and leave behind our sun, Mercury and Venus, to arrive in front of Mars the planet with red dunes. Mars is a telluric planet, 
i.e. rocky, which has 10 times less mass than the Earth. Seen from space, it appears reddish because of the iron oxide rich dust that covers its surface. Once hydrated, the iron oxide turns to rust, hence the ochre color of our neighboring planet. This is why it has been associated with war since ancient times, hence its name, which refers to the god of war in Roman mythology. The poles of Mars are permanently covered with whitish layers, which vary greatly with the seasons. For example, at the beginning of the boreal spring, the ice of the North Pole, exposed to the sun, becomes sublime. In other words, it goes directly from the solid state to the gaseous state. This sublimation then creates air masses that generate winds that stir up large quantities of dust and can trigger dust storms on a planetary scale. In addition, unlike the Earth, Mars has not experienced the phenomenon of plate tectonics, hence the colossal size of its volcanoes. On our planet, the crust moves according to the hot spot of the mantle, which expels the lava towards the surface, forming a succession of small volcanoes. On Mars, the lava accumulated in a single point, giving birth to gigantic volcanoes of more than 15 kilometers or 9 miles high, including the most famous, Olympus Mons, which peaks at more than 21,000 meters in altitude, or more than 68,000 feet high. Today, the Red Planet has lost most of its internal geological activity. Only a few landslides, CO2 geysers at the poles, earthquakes, and small lava flows continue to occur. Let's continue our journey, leaving Mars behind. Before reaching the next planet, we must cross the main asteroid belt, located between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. It is estimated that there are more than 150 million objects in this region. Here you can see the largest of them, the dwarf planet Ceres. Jupiter is impressive by its size and by the storms that rage on its surface. The gas giant has been observed by astronomers since the dawn of time, but there are still many mysteries about its nature and that of its moons. Jupiter is a gas giant planet. Although it is composed of 95% gas, mainly helium and hydrogen, which are light gases, it is more massive than all the planets of the solar system combined. Its volume is equivalent to 1,321 times that of the Earth. Named after the Roman god of gods, Jupiter, Zeus in Greek mythology, it is the fifth farthest planet from the Sun. The system of Jupiter has 69 confirmed moons of various sizes, shapes, and compositions. In honor of Jupiter's namesake, they are sometimes collectively called the Jovians, the four largest of these, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, are known as the Galileans. These four moons are among the largest in the solar system, with Ganymede being the largest of all, even larger than the planet Mercury. In addition, three of these moons, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, are thought to have internal oceans at or near the boundaries between the core and mantle. The presence of warm water oceans is considered an indication of potential life on these moons. Around the distant gas giant Saturn is a system of rings and moons of unparalleled beauty. The Saturn system is just ahead of Jupiter in terms of the number of satellites with 82 confirmed moons. 
Among these, the largest moons are divided into two groups. The large inner moons, which orbit close to Saturn in its faint E-ring, and the large outer moons, which lie beyond the E-ring. They are, in order of distance from Saturn, Mimas, Enelatus, Thetis, Dion, Rhea, Titan. Let's continue our crossing of the solar system to join the distant icy giants. Uranus is not the biggest planet, the most favorable to life, or the most mediatized of the solar system. However, the icy giant has its share of curiosities, and much remains to be discovered about its nature. With Neptune, Uranus is the only icy giant planet of our solar system. It is located about 3 billion kilometers from our star, in seventh position with respect to the Sun. Its atmosphere is mainly composed of hydrogen, 83%, and helium, 15%. It is surrounded by a mantle of volatile components, water, ammonia, and methane. In spite of its state between liquid and solid, the latter are called ices, hence the name of icy giant Uranus. Like Uranus, Neptune is an icy giant. It is the most distant planet from our star, and it shelters the most violent storms of the solar system. With its bluish hue of unknown origin and its diamond showers, Neptune conceals incredible riches. Its internal composition is similar to that of Uranus. It is thought that Neptune has a rocky core of iron and silicates, surrounded by water, methane, and hydrocarbons in various states, ranging from solid to liquid. It is said to be surrounded by an atmosphere of hydrogen, helium, and methane. Neptune's atmosphere is composed mainly of 84% hydrogen, 12% helium, and 1.5% methane, with some traces of ammonia, ethane, and acetylene. It is the methane that absorbs the light in the reddish wavelengths and makes Neptune appear blue. But this blue color, so characteristic of Neptune, is close to the blue-violet. The methane cannot be the only one responsible for this hue. With methane alone, Neptune would be blue-green, like Uranus. Therefore, other chemical elements still unknown are responsible for this characteristic color. Let's leave this mystery behind us and continue our progress. Before leaving our solar system, do you know how many planets are in our solar system? It holds eight in theory but it seems that a debate has recently appeared on this subject. What if a ninth planet, very discreet, could be added to our inventory? Since the 19th century, a hypothetical planet has aroused the curiosity of some researchers. The cause? Certain irregularities in the orbit of the planet Uranus have been observed. These irregularities suggest that a ninth planet could, by its gravitational force, have an impact on the orbit of Uranus. Extrapolation models used to explain the formation of the solar system suggest the necessity of a fifth gas planet to arrive at the planetary system as we know it today. Sometimes called Planet X, Planet 9, or Nibiru, this planet located at the edge of our solar system would be much further away from our Sun than Neptune and would reside in the Kuiper Belt. But did it really exist? And if so, is it still evolving around our Sun? Our journey does not allow us to cross its path and we will not have an answer to this enigma, at least not today. Moreover, it would be wise not to cross either an asteroid or a comet Otherwise, our journey could become more chaotic.
Although the cosmos is essentially empty, some areas are more delicate to cross, and this is particularly the case of the asteroid belt that we saw before, which separates Mars from Jupiter. This one is mainly composed of rocky debris, which can at any time leave their residence area. The area we are currently admiring is the Kuiper Belt. This perimeter, in addition to hosting three dwarf planets, which are Pluto, Makimaki, and Haumea, is full of future comets composed of methane, ammonia, or water in the ice state. If the majority of them are small, some of them can represent a real danger for any space traveler and cause a fatal damage. No less than 70,000 objects larger than 100 kilometers or 60 miles in diameter have been recorded to date. Although most of these celestial objects follow a relatively predictable orbit, some can change their trajectory at any time and adopt a totally anarchic and unpredictable behavior. In fact, sometimes one of them takes a trajectory that leads it directly into our atmosphere. As it approaches the sun, the components of this object heat up until they ignite. The comet is then adorned with a double hair separated into two tails. The first, made of dust, is yellow, while the second is bluish, because composed of gas. The closer the comet gets to the sun, the more it melts, offering us an unbelievable spectacle, with its hair stretching 30 to 80 million kilometers across our sky. But how about, in order to shorten our travel time, taking a shortcut through space-time, in other words, a wormhole? It would allow us to live a fascinating experience while avoiding a long and tumultuous journey. But do you know what a wormhole is? If you're a movie fan, you already know about this hypothetical phenomenon, which takes the form of a cylindroid connecting two distinct planes of the universe, like a tunnel linking two very distant areas. Let's take a closer look at these bridges that would cross space. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, we can mathematically predict the existence of wormholes. Like a viaduct, wormholes would offer fabulous shortcuts through the universe. It would then be a matter of borrowing a passage in space-time, in other words, to cross a stargate. By doing so, a space traveler could connect two different points in space while reducing the time and distance of travel. If the existence of wormholes is still only a theory, but today the situation is different. After crossing the Kuiper Belt, you can see what appears to be a mini black hole in the distance. As a space explorer, I suggest you try the experiment. Let's head towards this mysterious area of space. We are approaching the wormhole. This one presents an indescribable shape. In fact, it looks rather like a sphere. The more we get closer to it, and the more it appears gigantic, bewitching, a light emanates from the other side. Could it be the stars of a distant part of the universe, located on the other side of a wormhole? Whatever it is, it is too late to change our minds. We are as if sucked in by this structure, which starts to spin, and which, like a funnel, propels us into its narrow throat. This one takes the shape of a luminous and intoxicating tunnel, whose walls seem to undergo a destabilizing distortion. In the meanders of this passage, where the space-time plays with us, our reference points are reduced, and we have the impression to be in freefall, to undergo an unprecedented acceleration. All our cells are in turmoil. Fortunately, 
This disconcerting sensation, although spectacular, does not last long. Here we are, as if ejected from the tunnel, through a mouth similar to the one we had previously passed through. If our mind is still shaken by this cosmic experience, our new environment, on the other hand, has become again of a side reel calm, offering us a spectacle still unknown to our eyes. We arrived in the Centaurus constellation, one of the largest of the 88 constellations that cover our night sky. It has been assigned the 15th place. From Earth, its observation is only possible from the Southern Hemisphere, where it offers our southern sky a large number of bright stars. Its name, Centaurus in Latin, comes from its representation of Chiron, the wisest of the centaurs in Greek mythology, a creature, half man, half horse. On ancient maps, the head of the centaur seems to touch the tail of the Hydra, the largest of all constellations, while one can admire between its legs the Southern Cross, which is the smallest. However, this ranking in terms of size does not prevent it from hosting a splendid cluster of stars. Also located in the Milky Way, the Centaurus constellation has as neighbors the Scorpio constellation to the west and the gigantic ship Argo to the east, which since the 1750s has been divided into three smaller constellations, the Carina, the Stern, and the Sails. But let's get back to our expedition and try to situate ourselves more precisely in this constellation. Our gaze is inevitably attracted by the important luminosity of a nearby star. You could think that it is our sun, so much it resembles it, but think again. The wormhole we just passed through teleported us to the region of Alpha Centauri A, the brightest star in the entire Centaurus constellation. We have just traveled more than four light years in only a handful of seconds, and can now discover this part of the universe from the south of the constellation. A marvelous spectacle is unfolding in the distance. You can only be fascinated by so much beauty. From a luminous halo, bathed in hundreds of billions of stars, a density like no other radiates. After a short moment of observation, you notice that this halo is crossed by clouds of dust or other clusters, all more sparkling than the others, with coppery hues. There is no doubt about it, we are facing Centaurus A, a strange elongated galaxy located far beyond our position in the center of the Centaurus constellation. We can revel in a unique stellar landscape that lies outside the local group. And for good reason, it is the Centaurus A galaxy, also called NGC 5128, 12.4 million light years away from our solar system. But now, you can get excited while admiring it in its entirety. This galaxy is located outside the local group, more than 12 million light years from our position. It is a gigantic galaxy with a diameter of over 90,000 light years. Despite its size, this galaxy remains a mystery. Is it an elliptical galaxy or a lenticular galaxy? If scientists have not yet decided on its exact type, on the other hand, its name, linked to the letter A, designates it as the most powerful radio source discovered in the constellation of Centaurus. Moreover, its unusual appearance, composed of two half ovals of nebulae, cut in two, and separated by a wide dark band, earned it the nickname of Hamburger Galaxy. 
It has a supermassive black hole in its heart. This huge black hole has a mass equivalent to about 55 million times that of the Sun. Its disproportionate size probably explains its particularity. This radio galaxy is one of the most powerful in the sky. The light emitted by the hydrogen and oxygen radiation is blinding. The dense matter that comes too close to the black hole is absorbed, releasing an enormous amount of energy which causes the important luminosity of the core, the strong radio emissions, and the immense jets so typical of this galaxy. These jets, sources of X-ray and radio emissions, move at nearly 9 million kilometers per minute in their inner part and extend over more than a million light years. Its bulge is mainly made up of old red stars but the activity in the disk is not easy, as many stellar explosions take place. Moreover, although it looks like a galaxy of elliptical nature, its appearance is not as smooth as one might expect. A wide irregular band of dark material obscures its center. This dark band is composed of dust, young stars, and a large amount of gas. We can also observe, almost in the line of the jets, two groups of reddish filaments that extend about 30,000 light years from the nucleus of the galaxy for the first and 65,000 light years for the second. These filaments are real nurseries of young and hot stars. Although located beyond the local group and being the fifth brightest galaxy in the sky, it extends over almost 20 times the visible diameter of the Moon and is a delight for amateur astronomers in the Southern Hemisphere or in the low northern latitudes. This unusual structure, combined with powerful radio emissions, suggests that a collision occurred between a smaller spiral galaxy and Centaurus A, which by its gravitational attraction would have absorbed a too curious neighbor, leaving only this dusty band containing more than 100 star-forming regions as evidence. According to astronomers, this monster has been digesting for several hundred million years, offering us this unique spectacle. It even happens that this galaxy is considered as a source of ultra-high energy cosmic rays. More than 1,500 globular clusters accompany it, adorning it with an inestimable number of stars. Some of them, rich in metals, follow a rotational movement around the main axis of the galaxy, while others, poorer in metals, do not. Their different composition, suggesting two distinct ages, as well as their divergent attitude, confirms the hypothesis of a merger between two galaxies that became too close. But let's look at another globular cluster in the Centaurus constellation. Let's rotate 180 degrees and look at Omega Centauri, listed as NGC 5139. More than 10 million stars are concentrated in a region about 150 light years in diameter. Its size makes it the largest, most massive, and brightest globular cluster in our Milky Way. Its mass is equivalent to about 5 million solar masses, making it 10 times more massive than a typical large globular cluster. It is almost as massive as a small galaxy. The first descriptions of this celestial object by Ptolemy erroneous because of its unusual characteristics, placed it in the category of stars. It was in the 1830s that Omega Centauri was recognized as an atypical globular cluster with the help of a large telescope. Although there are at least 200 other globular clusters in our galaxy, Omega Centauri stands out from the rest. Its characteristics make it possible to establish a hypothesis. 
It could be the central remnant of a dwarf galaxy, which would have decayed on contact with the Milky Way. This theory is reinforced by the presence of various populations of stars. Some are 12 billion years old, while others are much younger. Its central region has so many stars that they are only 0.1 light years apart. A black hole of intermediate mass is even suspected to be at the heart of Omega Centauri. In addition, its rotational speed is much higher than that of typical globular clusters, most likely giving it its flattened shape. Among the amazing objects located in the Centauri constellation, one is located in the coldest known part of the universe where the temperature is only minus 272 degrees Celsius, that is to say, one degree more than the absolute zero, that is to say, minus 457 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the Boomerang Nebula, also known as the Bipolar Centaurus Nebula, or the Butterfly Nebula, it is about 5,000 light years away from our Earth. It appears to be in the process of evolving into a planetary nebula. A star at the end of its life, which has lost nearly one and a half times the mass of the sun in the last 1500 years, is losing its mass. The white dwarf continuously expels matter, and the gas keeps expanding beyond. It then forms clouds of dust and gas that it illuminates the nebula is expanding at a speed of about 160 kilometers per second, or 100 miles per second. If the central part of the nebula looks like an hourglass from the Earth, it is not so when you look at it more closely. This shape is due to the presence of dense dust and the large cloud of molecular gas. Images from the Hubble Space Telescope in 1998 have effectively demonstrated that the bow tie shape is an optical illusion. The gas cloud surrounding the Boomerang Nebula is indeed spherical. But let's not lose sight of our goal, which is to get closer to a star that could harbor life. What if we turned and headed for the brightest star in the southern constellation of Centauri? I suggest we take a closer look at Alpha Centauri, a triple system. Yes, you heard me right. Let's study this system with three suns, distant from our solar system by only 4.3 light years, or about 25,000 billion kilometers, or 15,000 billion miles, giving it the title of First Stellar Neighbor. But first, Let's look at Alpha Centauri, AB, a double star. Although at first glance it appears to be a single star, in reality, this star is a binary system. The two stars orbit around a common center of mass with a period of 80 years. Due to an eccentric orbit, their mutual distance varies from 11 astronomical units, about 11 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun, to almost 36 astronomical units. The brightest is Alpha Centauri A, or Rigel Centaurus, which means Foot of the Centaur in Arabic. It is also the fourth brightest star in our night sky, after Sirius, Canopus, and Arcturus. This star, whose age is estimated at around 4.6 billion years, could be the twin of our Sun, both by size, mass, and age. Centauri A is thus similarly of spectral type G2V. This yellow dwarf takes about 22 days to complete its rotation. Its speed is therefore about 2.7 kilometers per second, or one mile per second. Its resemblance to our sun has led it to being the destination of many film fictions. The movie Avatar is the best example. 
In this fiction, Pandora is the exaloon of a gas giant named Polyphemus, which orbits around Alpha Centauri A. Humanoid beings, the Na'vi, evolve on this exaloon in the best way, alongside an atypical fauna and a dense and intelligent flora. But what do our scientists think about it? Could a discovery of this order see the day? Can we hope to find any trace of life in a solar system of this type? A study by NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory reveals that the prospects for life in terms of current X-ray bombardment would be better around Alpha Centauri A than our Sun. It now remains to be discovered if a planet evolves in the habitable zone of this star. Astronomers based at the European Southern Observatory in the Atacama Desert in Chile have mentioned that they were surprised by the sighting of a bright spot near Alpha Centauri A. At the moment, if it is only a hypothesis, we can still talk about a candidate planet. This one would be a hot planet smaller than Neptune and could be located in the habitable zone. What to continue? to make us dream. And what about the secondary star of this solar system, Alpha Centauri b? Although still similar to our Sun, this second star, also known as Ptolemyan, is a little smaller and a little less bright than its neighbor. However, it can also be observed with the naked eye from our Earth. It represents 0.9 times the mass of the Sun, and less than 0.5 times its luminosity. Its main sequence being of spectral type K1, hence its more orange, even red color. This star, older than the first one, is about 6 billion years old. It also falls into the category of slow spinners, with a projected rotation speed of only 1.1 kilometer per second, or less than one mile per second. To complete a rotation, Alpha Centauri b takes 36 days. Although its luminosity is lower than that of its neighbor, it is the brightest source of X-ray emission in this double system. This star being cooler than our sun, if a habitable planet existed in its environment, it should be closer to it than our Earth is to the Sun. It turns out that two candidate planets orbiting Alpha Centauri b have been studied. The first, Alpha Centauri bb, detected in 2012, had its existence disputed two years later. The second, Alpha Centauri bc, is still considered a candidate planet. However, it would be located too close to its star to find a trace of life or hope to create it. It is therefore necessary to continue the search for a planet that would be 0.7 to 1.2 astronomical units away from this star. For researchers, a potentially habitable planet in the Alpha Centauri system could exist after extrapolating the composition of a rocky planet from the chemical compositions of Alpha Centauri, A and B, they were able to estimate the mineralogy, internal composition, and atmosphere of a hypothetical planet that they named Alpha Sen Earth. This one could be similar to the Earth in many ways. But let's continue our exploration and get closer to the last star of this triple system, Alpha Centauri C, more often named Proxima Centauri. Usually not visible to the naked eye, you can finally see it sparkle with a thousand lights. This star, just over four light years from Earth, is the closest star to our Sun. Its average luminosity is relatively low compared to its two neighbors that we have just explored. Indeed, Proxima Centauri is a red star 
of spectral type M5.5VE, which indicates a red main sequence. If its total luminosity represents one thousandth of the luminosity of the Sun, on the other hand, 85% of the energy it emits is in an invisible infrared zone. The temperature at its surface is estimated at more than 2700 degrees Celsius, that is to say, more than 4,892 degrees Fahrenheit. Its mass is only one-tenth that of the Sun, and its radius is only one-seventh. Proxima Centauri is therefore much smaller than its closest companions. Indeed, the two stars that make up Alpha Centauri have masses and diameters much closer to our Sun. However, its relatively close position to our Sun gives it the status of a central star. Difficult to spot in our starry sky because of its low luminosity, its discovery is relatively recent and dates from 1915. The third star orbits around Alpha Centauri AB every 547,000 years. It therefore belongs to the category of slow spinners with a projected rotational speed of less than 0.1 kilometers per second. With an eccentricity of 0.50, its distance from the central pair can be from about 4,300 to 13,000 astronomical units, or about 0.2 light years. As for its age, it is estimated at more or less 4.85 billion years, that is to say, almost a billion years older than our Sun. This star, even if it is small, is far from having said its last word. While the Sun will reach the end of its life at the approximate age of 10 billion years, Proxima is expected to remain on the main sequence for more than a thousand billion years because of its characteristics. Scientists agree that stars with a mass less than 0.25 times that of the Sun do not evolve into red giants. Thus, as the proportion of helium in the star increases due to hydrogen fusion, it will become smaller and hotter, and its color will gradually change from red to blue. Its activity is probably not as constant as it might first appear. Also referred to as a flaming star, its brightness may increase suddenly for a few minutes. Convection processes in its core make it unpredictable, while offering a brilliant show of stellar light. If you take a closer look, you can also see that its atmosphere is quite chaotic due to the magnetic activity that reigns there. It undergoes eruptions of incredible dimensions which can exceed the size of several Earths. The temperature can then exceed 27 million degrees, producing X-rays. This activity, like that of our Sun, is cyclical and varies over a period of 442 days. This star also has a regular cycle of stellar spots, whose peaks occur every seven years. These, like sunspots, correspond to dark areas on its surface, where the temperature is lower than the surrounding area. The magnetic fields reduce the flow of plasma, composed of ionized gases, creating spots on the surface, sometimes covering nearly 5% of its overall surface. The presence of these magnetic fields and their impact makes astrologers think. Could this activity impact the viability of a space that could harbor a source of life in the habitable zone of Proxima Centauri? This question is all the more relevant since Proxima Centauri has a planetary system. At least one planet is located in its so-called habitable zone, and I propose that we go there right away. Tell me, 
How do you imagine this planet with three suns? Do you think that it can already host any form of life? Let's try to find out more about this planet, which could be the first planet other than Earth on which life is possible. Let's head for Proxima Centauri b, the closest exoplanet to our blue planet. While the discovery of this planet caused a stir in the astrological sphere in 2016, it confirmed Kepler's theory. According to the data collected, we should discover at least one potentially habitable planet the size of Earth, orbiting M-type stars like Proxima Centauri. All we need to do now is find it with ever more sophisticated technology. But let's take a closer look at what Proxima Centauri b looks like. This exoplanet is much closer to its star than our Earth is to the Sun. In fact, it is 20 times closer, with a distance of only 7.5 million kilometers from its central star, or less than 4.5 million miles. This distance is even less than the distance between Mercury and the Sun. This proximity considerably shortens the duration of its orbit. This is why a year on Proxima Centauri b lasts only 11.2 days, the time for it to make a complete orbit around its star. However, because it orbits a red dwarf, it is located in the so-called habitable zone of Proxima Centauri. Let's recall the characteristics necessary for a planet to be considered potentially habitable. The distance from its star must allow it to receive enough light to maintain a surface temperature higher than that of frozen water, which is the case for Proxima Centauri b. The size of this rocky planet is slightly larger than our Earth. Its radius is estimated at 1.08 times that of the Earth, and its mass at 1.27 times, making it a super-Earth. But this planet, like our Moon, could be subject to great gravitational forces due to its small distance from its star, and thus always show the same face. Its atmosphere, if it has one, could be very similar to that of the Earth, composed of nitrogen and carbon dioxide. It could be covered by an ocean of water, 200 kilometers or 125 miles deep, which would then be able to transfer heat to the cold side of the planet, the side still facing space. The presence of water in liquid form accumulating on the surface being an essential condition for the appearance of life, we can then be tempted to imagine what form it could have. But for all that, life on the surface of this planet could be compromised if its black body temperature, i.e. the temperature of Proxima Centauri b, assuming it has no atmosphere, is estimated to be minus 39 degrees Celsius or minus 38 degrees Fahrenheit, it seems slightly lower than that of the Earth without its atmosphere, which would be minus 18 degrees Celsius or minus 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit. However, a phenomenon could call everything into question. This is the activity of the star, which sends stellar winds that can be very violent, 2,000 times stronger than those we know on Earth. However, some like to believe that a form of life could exist not on the day side, let alone the dark side, but in the border region between these two zones. This habitable zone, known as the termination line or twilight zone, would be located between the very hot side and the very cold side where the temperature would favor the existence of water in the liquid state. But as we have already seen, Proxima Centauri emits a large amount of ultraviolet light and x-rays, 
400 times more than we receive from our sun on Earth. This is far from favorable for surface life, but it does not rule out the possibility of subsurface life. By the way, a fact shook the astrological community a few years ago. For 60 years, a number of scientists have been scanning the sky for radio signals, and between April and May 2019, researchers studying Proxima Centauri in Australia at the Parkes Observatory picked up a strange radio signal that seemed to come from that region of space. What if it was, as some researchers hope, an extraterrestrial broadcast signal? This signal, then recorded, is named BLC-1 and is still being studied to determine its origin. It could be a banal noise from space, not yet identified, or even a signal whose explanation could be terrestrial. But for all that, its strangeness has not yet allowed us to identify it, and still excites a good number of people. Still, the view from this planet whose luminosity is twilight on a blazing star, with on the horizon another star, composed of a starry duo, is enough to make one dream, and to offer magnificent inspirations to the filmmakers. But is it the only planet around Proxima Centauri? For the moment, we can say that another planet orbits Proxima. Much larger than Proxima Centauri b, but also much further away, let's discover Proxima Centauri c, or more simply, Proxima c. This exoplanet is approximately 1.5 astronomical units away from its star, which is equivalent to the distance between Mars and the Sun. It is therefore a super-Earth or mini-Neptune-type planet that evolves at a distance of 225 million kilometers from its star, or about 140 million miles from its star. Its mass is seven times that of our Earth, and its orbital period is 1,907 days. Although its existence is no longer in doubt among many scientists, its description is not yet refined. Its brightness, much higher than what it should produce as a super-Earth, challenges the astronomers of the National Institute of Astrophysics of Italy, who have published an image of the candidate planet. The image collected would be more in favor of a planet with much larger dimensions, that is to say, at least five times the diameter of Jupiter. But these dimensions would indicate that Proxima c cannot be a telluric planet, and would therefore be a gas giant. However, astronomers do not rule out the possibility of a telluric planet. To explain the excess of luminosity of this planet, the researchers put forward two hypotheses. The first is that the planet is surrounded by a system of ice rings. The second would be that it is covered by a significant cloud cover. These two phenomena being able to reflect the light, they would then make it possible to explain why this super-Earth seems so luminous compared to its size. In any case, whether it is a gas giant or a super-Earth, Proxima c, unlike Proxima b, is unfortunately located well outside the habitable zone. The considerable distance separating it from its star places it, at best, in the category of a cold super-Earth making life on this planet impossible because of a surface temperature estimated at only minus 233 degrees Celsius or minus 387 degrees Fahrenheit. This configuration is of particular interest to scientists because a super-Earth so far from its star could call into question the theory of planet formation. The discovery of these two planets orbiting Proxima Centauri 
the closest star to our solar system has only heightened astronomers' curiosity. In order to study this planetary system, scientists use the very large telescope of the European Southern Observatory, based in Chile. Although the planets themselves are difficult to observe, they have achieved a feat. By observing the periodic motions of the star Proxima, they concluded that this motion had a periodicity of five days. This finding is unequivocal. For the scientists, the star is very slightly impacted by the orbit of a planet in its close periphery. A hundred nights of analysis have allowed them to bring these conclusions. A third planet orbits this star. This new candidate, named Proxima Centauri d, would have a mass equivalent to a quarter of that of our Earth. It would be a very small planet which could be compared to a mini-Earth and possibly have a rocky soil. Its distance from the star would only be about 4 million kilometers, or less than 2.5 million miles. However, this planet which remains the lightest exoplanet known to date, is far too close to its star. Like Proxima Centauri c, it is unfortunately not in the so-called habitable zone. This umpteenth discovery, however, gives rise to new hopes. Our stellar neighbor seems to harbor an intriguing number of new worlds, the probability that this star has a multi-planetary system, only by chance, is almost zero. This means that all stars in this same category, namely red dwarfs, must probably have their own planetary system. Looking for any trace of life at the edge of the universe is therefore no longer science fiction, but science at its most basic. Moreover, for scientists at the ALMA Observatory in Chile, this theory is confirmed by the presence of dust belts around Proxima Centauri. ALMA data reveal the presence of radiation from cold dust around the star. This dust, made up of remnants of matter that have not agglomerated into planets or other celestial objects, is composed of rock and ice particles. Of various sizes, they can have the dimension of a grain of dust, but also, and more rarely, that of an asteroid of several kilometers in diameter. This belt is several hundred million kilometers away from the star, well beyond the estimated distance between the star and Proxima Centauri b, the potential habitable planet. The total mass of this belt is estimated to be one hundredth of the mass of the Earth. Like the Kuiper belt on the outskirts of our solar system, this one is characterized by a very low temperature of about minus 230 degrees Celsius or minus 382 degrees Fahrenheit. Another discovery, even more surprising, intrigues astronomers. A second belt could exist, ten times more distant than the previous one. Many questions about the nature of this belt remain. What would this second belt, located at such a great distance from the central star, be made of? Is it part of a complex planetary system, whose multiple interactions would have led to its formation? Researchers around the world still have many secrets to unravel, especially since technology is constantly evolving and the new generations of large ground-based telescopes are promising. Their relentless pursuit of these distant worlds, combined with data collected by the European Space Agency's Gaia satellite and NASA's Voyagers 1 and 2 probes, should allow them to make more and more discoveries. Proxima Centauri is certainly not over, especially since it seems to have all the qualities required 
to host many other planets. Who knows, could one of them already be home to a form of life? It remains to discover and explore them. This is what some people intend to do. One example is the Breakthrough Starshot Project, initially supported by Stephen Hawking, a renowned astrophysicist. Proxima Centauri, as the closest solar system to our Sun, will be the most accessible to our future space explorations. The interest that many astrologers have for it does not diminish, especially since a complex planetary system could well be located there. As you may have understood, the interstellar journey you are making is a virtual journey. No device has yet been able to approach such a distant system, and even less a human being. However, a project is under development. This last one, although considered as far-fetched at the time of its announcement, should become feasible in the next decades, thanks to the hard work of many scientists. This is the Breakthrough Starshot Project, whose announcement on April 12, 2016, live on the internet by British astrophysicist Stephen Hawking and Russian entrepreneur Yuri Milner, seemed like something out of a science fiction movie. The project, which originally has a private budget of $100 million, calls for the launch of a fleet of thousands of gram-scale robotic spacecraft, with the goal of reaching the Alpha Centauri system region. These nanochips, to reach their objective, will be propelled by a terrestrial light beam directed on their sail. Thanks to an expected speed of about 20% of the speed of light, these nanocarriers, or nanocrafts, could evolve near Alpha Centauri in the 20 years following their launch. This coveted speed would then be 1,000 times greater than that of the space probes that already travel our universe, namely Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. If this project, which faces many technological challenges, is realized, within two decades these nanocrafts would be able to capture images of possible planets in the vicinity of this promising star system, Proxima Centauri. Imagine the amount of information that could be collected. We could survey, map and study this region of space even more closely. And what if the data collected would open a new path? A way to another habitable region of the universe. Such a great distance, covered in such a short time, seems impossible. And yet, divided into two distinct teams, some are focusing on miniaturized space probes, while others are working on the laser transmitter. These researchers face challenges never before encountered. Various technological feats must still be achieved in order to overcome the technical difficulties linked to this unprecedented space exploration. And they are numerous. The maneuverability and stability of the space probe their energy source as well as their battery, the recovery of the collected data, their resistance to the luminous flux of the laser, but also to the interstellar environment, and so many others. The structure of the space sail of the nanoprobes remains, however, the central technological challenge of the project. A concept of the sail to propel a probe is not, however, a novelty. In 2010, the Japanese agency has already used the so-called solar sail for the launch of the probe, Ikeros. As a kite, whose sail measured 14 meters on each side, or 45 feet on each side, this probe could move for several months in space. Its sail, thinner than a hair, was covered with photovoltaic cells and a special material, sensitive to particles. The photons emitted by our Sun 
then struck the sail, exerting on it a radiative pressure, allowing it to progress in space. But for the envisaged expedition, it is about an interstellar voyage. The solar energy decreasing with a distance to the sun, it will quickly become insufficient. It was thus necessary to find another solution. The idea of replacing the solar energy by a very powerful terrestrial laser beam was then imposed. Propelled by an intense laser beam, the sail must resist the intense heat that it will produce while being ultra-thin. In order to carry the space probe to its destination, it must not tear or melt under the power of the light beam. To avoid this inconvenience that would jeopardize the expedition, the engineers were able to determine the optimal shape to give to this canopy, which will have to measure three meters wide, that is to say, almost ten feet wide. As with a parachute, the depth and width of the canopy must be similar in order to limit tensions and thus the risks of tearing. The different materials of the canopy are also the subject of scrupulous studies. The sail, composed of ultra-thin layers of aluminum oxide and molybdenum disulfide, will be able to accumulate the radiative pressure produced by the laser, which will fire a large number of photons at it. The more photons there are, the faster the propelled object will go but the more it will have to resist extreme temperatures. The Breakthrough Starshot project, beyond the hope of collecting a lot of data on our neighboring solar system, is above all a unifying project. There is no doubt that within a few short decades, one or more planets, potentially with traces of extraterrestrial life, could be detected at a distance by spectroscopy. It is obvious that such a discovery will only increase the desires of exploration of scientists who, like our humanity on borrowed time, hope to see the day when space explorations dedicated to the conquest of space will finally become feasible. An unexpected event, even if it did not call the project into question, could nevertheless put a damper on the idea of possible life on the most promising exoplanet, Proxima b. This planet, which orbits the star Proxima Centauri, 4.23 light years from Earth, might not be as welcoming as hoped. The event in question was noted by an American team of astrophysicists. This March 24, 2017, was no ordinary day for Proxima Centauri. This announcement follows a celestial event that increased the brightness of Proxima Centauri by 1,000 times for about 10 seconds. A less bright flash had also been observed shortly before. The record flare, which lasted less than two minutes in total, was much more intense than any observed so far. It is very likely that Proxima b was bombarded by high-energy radiation during this light flash. If Proxima Centauri regularly shows solar flares, these flares make astrologers wonder about the habitability of Proxima b. Following this observation, the habitability of this planet is questioned. Indeed, over the billions of years since Proxima b was formed, flares like this one could have led to the evaporation of its atmosphere or oceans and sterilized its surface. During this solar flare, Proxima b potentially received such a high dose of radiation that it could have wiped out any possible trace of life. Considering that other flares have already been observed on Proxima of the Centaur, Proxima b could be a charred, atmosphereless Earth, a barren desert world like our twin, the Red Planet.
While there are undoubtedly rocky planets orbiting the countless M-class red dwarfs, such as Proxima Centauri, the simple fact that they are in the habitable zone is no longer the only criterion to be taken into account. M dwarfs turn out to be much more flamboyant and active than yellow stars similar to our Sun. Can we then still imagine that life could emerge on a planet orbiting close to an M dwarf? Our interstellar journey is coming to an end. The next time you look deep into the sky on a beautiful starry night, the size of the sky will probably not be the same in your eyes. However, you can be sure that you will still be amazed. Although this expedition has given you the opportunity to dive into the heart of the universe and enjoy a breathtaking spectacle, many of your questions remain unanswered. Even within the scientific community, despite the ever-increasing technological advances, many mysteries remain. Recent discoveries confirm theories or challenge past deductions, inevitably leading to new questions. But the progress of science is legion, and the desire to conquer space could well become reality, thanks to the research work more and more advanced and successful. What about you? Do you think that one day an interstellar expedition could embark men on board a spaceship and thus allow them to travel through the universe in search of a new world?